parts, the components that you'll need for the DIY tandoori oven is a galvanized steel bin, 90 liters I think, brought from the local DIY store. Fire bricks, took me a long time to get hold of these, these weren't available in any of the local builders, merchants, B&Q stores, um, I did search pretty much everywhere but ended up uh, buying these online because uh, the price including the delivery was about the same as getting them from the local um, Gibbs and Dandy store. A terracotta pot also um, from the local garden center and some vermiculite so this is uh, required for the insulation and um, again I got this from the local DIY store um, had a look um, in the likes of B&Q and couldn't find it there and then just ordered this online click and collect very easy to get hold of really once you know and then how. I've got some sand as well uh, which will be needed just to fill in some of the gaps and the holes um, that will be created. And then the equipment that you're going to need is this is going to be integral an angle grinder with a diamond cutting blade there's a lot of masonry that we're going to be cutting through today and then health and safety wise uh, some safety gloves and safety goggles as well. One of the process is to create the base of fire bricks within the galvanized steam steel bin so I've laid them out here and I'm going to place this bit on top of and then draw around it and then use the masonry drill to cut them out. What I think I've got is enough spare space to uh, completely cover this area when I need to. Okay, that's uh, the bin marked up on the bricks. Now I'm just going to use the angle grinder to uh, cut this those out. This is the finished base now that it has been cut with the angle grinder, not an easy task I must admit, uh, lots of angles, lots of fiddly bits, uh, took a good good hour or so, if not a bit more, but uh, I think we're there. Uh, as you're putting it into the bin, we might need to uh, um, take it down a little bit more, grind it down a little bit more, but uh, that's just uh, as and when. Okay. Just lined the inside of the bin with some sand at the base there just to ensure a snug fit of all of the bricks. And there we have it, so um, I've put those five bricks inside the bin and I've put a layer of sand, depending on the final height that you want your tandoor to be, um, I've put um, about half a centimetre of sand in there. Okay, so ready for the next stage. So step two in the process then is to get four bricks and line them up um, and cut them in half and those will then go inside the bin as the next layer, inside the oven as the next layer. Um, so yeah, I've marked them up and uh, just going to use the angle grinder again to cut those up. Okay, so there we have it. So um, I've cut up those bricks into um, halves and placed them in. And actually what I decided to do uh, when I um, put them in there originally is they weren't fitting that nicely. So um, I nicked the edges of them um, just so that they would all fit in um, perfectly. And now what I've done is I've made it a channel here. Um, I've cut these back so that here where is where we're going to now mark up and make our um, flu hole air hole. There we go, that was uh, pretty painless and straightforward with an angle grinder but we now have the flue hole as you can see it goes through there and uh, that will fly, supply plenty of um, air circulation when it's all up and running. Getting close to the end. I've um, got the clay pot here and um, I've marked about three centimetres, just over an inch or so down, all the way round and we're going to then cut that off and this will then fit nicely inside the galvanised bin. So after a lot of messy cutting and lots of uh, powder flying around everywhere I cut the top off the clay pot and um, 
actually the top of it it didn't quite fit in either so I needed to trim the top as well so adjust and use your angle grinder to get everything to fit and I had a few off cuts from the fire brick which you can see I've squidged in as well into the corners there okay so I've just put the lid back onto it and this gap now is going to get filled with uh, vermiculite simple as and there we go so I've added in the vermiculite to it, brought it up to about the rim just below the rim probably used about uh, 15 litres of the stuff very very light very very insulating apparently and then if we do the big reveal here we go there we go so that is your DIY Dundur ready to go now let's fire it up and see how it how it performs and uh, here is it in action put some chicken ticker in there with some smoking embers so it's uh, smoking it up and cooking it up and then later on I'm going to put some naan in there too tandoori naan